In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I add textures and wallpaper to my images using some very basic and quick techniques in Photoshop. In Photoshop, there's usually a number of ways to do the same thing, so what I'm about to show you isn't the only way, it's just my way of doing it. The first half of the presentation, I'll show you how I add textures to give an image a very organic and rustic look to the image. In the second part, I'll show you how I add wallpaper designs to a plain background. So let's get into it and open up our first image. I originally shot this image back in 2013 and it was shot with a single light source. The 500 watt light had a 2 meter octagonal softbox positioned directly above the model. The theme was the Bride of Frankenstein and as you can see it's a very clean image. As dramatic as the lighting is, I think it's still missing something, so I'm going to add textures to the image to get a more organic and darker feel to the image. Finding textures is really easy and there's two ways you can do that. Either go out and shoot a bunch of textures or just download them. You can use anything as a texture. I personally prefer walls, rusty metal and anything that's been outside and has been weathered over a long period of time. Or if you can't get out and about, head over to Google and just type in texture and that brings up a ton of results. You can also use fabric, wood, tiles, brick walls, water and in fact really anything. There are quite a number of sites that will allow you to download these images for free, but make sure you do check that there are no licensing issues. Once you have finalized the texture that you want to use, head over to your folder and bring it into Photoshop. I've brought this image into Adobe Bridge and I originally shot this image quite a number of years ago of a concrete wall just outside of my old uh, studio. The wall was about 6 meters high and 30 meters long, so I ended up with a wealth of concrete textures. I'm just going to make some minor adjustments to the image before I bring it into Photoshop. Once it's loaded into Photoshop, I'm going to clean up the image just to make it a bit more consistent with the texture. First, I'll use the lasso tool and select the two sides that show the edges and then Hitting the delete key, I can use the content aware tool to fill in the selected areas. Now using the spot healing brush tool, I'll clean up some of the concrete blemishes that may be a distraction to the rest of the image. Now our texture is cleaned up, let's drag and drop it into our main image by using the move tool and holding the shift key down. Once it is placed, let's position it and then we need to resize the image and we do that by going to edit, transform, scale and then hit enter to confirm the change. Let's bring up our layer palette here. Uh, now, what I'm going to do here is actually adjust the um, blending mode here, which is our little window there. So hitting our um, uh, drop down menu, head over to soft light. And you can see it's kind of created this really cool looking um, texture. The only thing I don't like this at, at the moment is it's really dark at this end of the, this side of the image and I'm not really a big fan of it. So what I'm going to do is um, make sure that's highlighted, go to edit, transform, flip horizontal, and it's taking it to that side. That's what I want personally want there. Now normally uh, there's a couple of ways you can actually um, uh, blend this in. You can either uh, use a selection tool, 
and highlight the area but because of our grading uh, in our grays here it's going to get a bit messy so I'm going to do this manually uh, make sure that that's highlighted go down to our mask click on that and make sure our brush is black and then move in Right, we've masked out um, our subject here. So I'm gonna adjust the opacity on this one and bring it down a touch. And a little bit more. And I'll probably clean up these two little sections there as well. They're kind of a bit distracting. So make sure we click our uh, main layer. Go to our spot healing tool. get rid of anything that, that like I said creates a distraction okay I mean normally you can probably just leave it like that and you've added a nice little texture but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add another texture to it another texture to it so file open and I'm gonna bring in something like this concrete here but what I want to do is flip this vertically so image Flip vertical. Drag and drop that over. Close that up. Again, place that. Go transform scale. And back to our soft light in our blending mode. Adjust the opacity of that. Shrink it right down. Click on the mask, hit the Alt button, and drag and drop, and it duplicates it. And we can play with this one here. It's looking good okay let's uh, add another one but this time let's use a bit of color head over to open I'm gonna grab this particular one here and again let's clean this up before we use it I want to get rid of these little blemishes there 
and maybe this line there as well. So to the spot healing tool once again. Let's unclip it, drag and drop it over. We can close that up, we don't need it. Again, resizing it. And back to soft light once again. Now, again, we can hit the Alt button, drag and drop our layer, our mask layer. And what I'm going to do is kind of create a vignette using that particular texture. So if we go back to uh, that particular mask again, go into our brush tool, and because we're going to punch through it all, we need to use our black brush. And what I'm going to do is actually just knock down the, um, the opacity of the brush and kind of blend in the center of it a bit. Like so. And let's bring it down a touch. And you can see it's looking great very simple before and after very simple thing to add what I might do is kind of soften this area up a bit and maybe even this as well Okay, now let's give an overall um, uh, color cast to it or color gradient. So let's over, head over to our uh, adjustment layers, go to gradient map. And first thing I'm gonna do is change that to 30%. Change that to also soft light. And pick a color that you actually like. So I'm gonna have a play with some of these. See which one suits the most, to my liking that is. Yeah, kind of like that. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we can bring it up. And let's highlight the mask. In fact, what I might do actually, if I get rid of that mask there, we can again grab one of these. And now we have our skin that's been exposed. So what I'm gonna do is double click on that and bring down the density. So we get you know, kind of a, um, a mid midway point for the blending of the skin tones. And there it is. I mean, that is really, really simple to do. So we have our original image and we've added a texture to it. Simple as. Okay, let's get on to part two of our tutorial. This time we're gonna do an image that's a lot more uh, bolder and crisper in uh, look. And this is the particular image that we're gonna do. And you can see uh, that it's already been uh, mainly processed here. I've already done the skin work there. And I'll show the original before and after shot. One of the first things we need to do is actually smooth out uh, the background. 
and you can see by the original image it's a little bit rougher so what I'm going to do is actually um, show you how I do that before we actually add the wallpaper first thing we need to do highlight on that Control J duplicate it twice need to unclick that top layer so we can see what we're doing to this particular layer uh, and this is a bit of a, a two-stage process for me uh, to actually smooth out the background so let's hit in, uh, head over to filter blur surface blur now surface uh, blur is designed uh, to preserve the edges so as you can see the radius is how much blur we put into the image and we can do that by adjusting that and the threshold gives you the ability to show how precisely you want the blurring to be so let's zoom into the image and in this particular case I'm going to set that to 95% and hit OK Let's bring back our top layer there using the selection, the quick selection tool. We can then actually go around and mask around our subject. And using the old button, we can then change the highlight from plus to minus let's head over and create a mask for it invert that and you can see it smoothed out our background quite a fair bit because basically it's showing through what's underneath Okay, so let's compress those two. Control J once again to duplicate it. Deselect that. And head over to Blur again, Filter Blur, but this time we're going to use Gaussian Blur. And let's punch it up quite a fair bit to smooth it right out as much as we can. you can see that's actually created a whole bunch of blur this is why we use surface blur first so the areas right near her become remain crisp and then the um, outer reaches we actually can blur it a lot more so let's bring that back in again uh, highlight our top layer layer at our mask and using our black brush make sure it's highlighted on black Make sure that's set at 100%. And we can then mask out There we go. You can see how smooth that is now. We've still got our crisp edges in there all good okay so we've prepared our image for our background okay so I've obviously pre-done that one and we can delete those two we don't need them anymore for the for the rest of the demonstration if you actually can see that um that it's time to add the uh, background textures now because we're doing our wallpaper it's a slightly different technique to um, our previous one which is um, very organic and rustic and you know a little bit rougher so what we need to do is create our little um, uh, pattern so let's head over to file open and I have this little wallpaper pattern that I actually bought I purchased from a wallpaper place of all places and um, if you really want to find some wallpaper again just like textures it's really easy to do 
type in wallpaper patterns and you get a whole truckload of different patterns here in all sorts of styles it's just a matter of downloading what you need again making sure you're allowed to and then uh, you've got something to work with so to create um, our wallpaper because uh, wallpaper is very um, repetitive it's gonna make this uh, part of the process very very easy to do so we've brought in this image and this image happens to be in size 2,000 pixels by 2,000 square and for me for my particular size image it's the perfect size it may be slightly different for you uh, depending on the resolution uh, of your image and you'll have to play around with it by adjusting the width um, of the actual image um, when you define it as a pattern what we need to do is head over to our selection highlight the whole image edit define pattern and hit OK now for us to use it we need to use the fill bucket tool so let's head back to our original image let's create a new layer and this will be our wallpaper layer going to our bucket tool go to pattern click on our uh, menu and you can see there's the pattern I just defined right there so let's click on that and hit our fill tool and you can see it's filled up the whole image now what I'm going to do here uh, now is actually just adjust that so my wallpaper goes uh, a bit more symmetrical and comes to the edge there so edit transform scale and let's bring that up just a touch like so now again let's change that to soft light and you can see it's gone a funny uh, color easy fix to it we just need to make sure our, um, our layers highlighted go to our adjustment layer palette click on black and white and then using the alt key clip in just between those two layers and that clips it into uh, performing on just that layer or you can click that um, item there that'll do the same thing now you can see because of the color tones we've actually lost a row and it happens to be I think yellow or green and we can bring them back in by adjusting our layer um, uh, menu um, toolbar there and you can see there so it's just a matter of leveling it out okay cool so what I'm gonna do is now adjust the opacity on that let's bring it down just a touch now at this present stage we're looking at it and our wallpaper goes straight uh, down not very realistic so we're gonna fix that by going to our um, selection tool again our rect uh, rectangular marquee tool and let's highlight just about where the um, the corner of the wall is it just which is just about there go to edit transform perspective and let's push that right out to it actually looks kind of real which is roughly about there hit enter to accept it and you can see the wallpaper is looking great it's looking very realistic and it kind of um, pers uh, the perspective shows that it's totally um, correct in a way so what we need to do now is change that to convert to smart object because I actually want to blur that give it a bit of depth of field so because I've changed that to um, smart object go to filter blur Gaussian blur 
And let's bring that down so we just get a slight blurring to the background. So we've got a bit, of, you can leave a crisp or you can um, add a bit of blurring to give it the depth of field. Let's actually um, accept that. Now the problem with that is it actually blurs the front end um, uh, of it as well. So the whole image is blurred. We don't want that. We want to keep that um, uh, fairly sharp. Let's click on that. Go to our brush tool. Make sure it's set at 100%. And let's mask that out. And if we zoom right in, you'll see that it blurs and starts to get sharper. So what I'm going to do is actually adjust that by about 40%, change that to white. So we get a gradual blur coming across. Okay, let's have a look. So you can see blurring and sharpening up as it gets uh, closer to our eye. Okay, so we've done all that. Now we've got to mask her out. So unclick that. Hit our um, main layer. Back to our quick selection tool. Like we did earlier. Let's go in. And click on our layer again, hit mask, and we've selected her. Bit of a play, and we're just about there. So you can see adding textures is really simple and easy. It's not a hard thing at all. Uh, by using various different bits and pieces of uh, opacity layers and um, uh, blending modes, we can get some pretty realistic and great looking backgrounds. Thanks for your time.